going to look at real quick. Um, this was an email I got, so I'm going to try to do this uh, tutorial kind of quick. But um, we've been working with shapes in After Effects, and what I'm going to do is show you how you can use the pen tool to create um, other shapes, uh, like the one couple that's been requested. This uh, Thunderbolt here, we can draw shapes out like this using the pen tool, and then we also have um, this heart here. And then to take it a little a step further, um, I've uh, also kind of done a version of the uh, Eiffel Tower, and I'm gonna show you how I've done those three. So let's get started on this. I'm going to just have a uh, background here so we can see these shapes as we uh, create them. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these real quick and start over. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to be using the pen tool up here. And I'm going to select the pen tool and make sure that this is just like using the shape tool right here. Make sure there's nothing selected here in the timeline and select that pen tool and then you'll notice that we have our fill and our stroke here that we can use. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is just so this is not so confusing I'm going to uh, shut off the uh, fill and just have the stroke. Uh, this will be a little bit easier when we're drawing. So just come into the viewer here and all you have to do is click, move to your next point and click, then move to your next point and click, and then just keep doing that to draw your lines. And there you have somewhat of a thunderbolt. Okay, now the good thing about this is uh, once I've drawn this shape, these points, I can look at this and decide if I want to make adjustments. And I do want to make adjustments. Uh, this tool, and these are a little bit difficult to see, so I'm going to shut off. There we go. We can see these points here, uh, these vertexes right here, uh, a little bit better. Um, those are our points that we've drawn in and we can move these after we've drawn them so this is very handy so if I want to move this let's see how I want to adjust this I'm not real disappointed with this but let's see I'm just gonna click and then I'm gonna drag over and click and drag over and just kinda of reshape this a little bit so I can click on these points and reshape this to how I want it maybe give it a little bit better look and we can also if we have several that we want to click on all we have to do is click on it and then shift click the next ones that we might want and then we can move uh, the set together and I'm gonna click on these four here and kind of adjust so I'm getting a, uh, a little bit better look. So even after you've drawn the shape, uh, you can go back in and make adjustments to it. So I'm going to go with that for right now. And then uh, just like all of our other shapes that we've been creating, uh, we can use our fill and our stroke up here. And I'm going to go ahead and add. Let me turn my background back on. And I'm going to uh, add a fill to this. And it's probably going to come in white. And then change the color to my uh, stroke here. And then I can also adjust the width of that stroke. All right. Get my selection tool here. And so now we have our Thunderbolt. Pretty easy to um, create there. So you can draw any number of shapes, um, different designs with this. And then just like all of our other shapes, uh, you can go into and you have your path, your stroke, your fill and your transform properties. So all of it again is you can animate just like we've animated all of the other shapes that we've been using. So the next thing that I want to do is we'll go ahead and shut this one off and I want to show you how I drew the uh, heart because that takes us to another um, property of the pen tool. 
So I'm going to get the pen tool again, make sure I have nothing selected down in here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to draw Bezier lines, Bezier curves. And this is another aspect of the pen tool. So you're going to use the pen tool a little bit differently than just clicking your points. And I'll demonstrate that here. So the first point I am going to click in. And to draw this, I'm just going to go straight up to draw this heart, or at least to begin to draw this heart. Come in here somewhere, kind of straight up. And then when I click this time, I'm going to click and drag. I'm just going to click and start dragging. And what that does is allows me to uh, create these handles and then begin to um, curve the line. Very, very useful. So with just two points, I've got half of my heart here. Now, the next time I'm going to, I'm going to close this out, and I didn't state that in the first shape that we created. But when you come back to your beginning point and you click on it, you close out. You can see right now this is not closed out. Um, but I'm going to close this out and it's going to uh, look a little weird, but we're going to fix it. Okay, so you can see now what has happened is the curve has followed this other handle here. It's come on around. So, of course, this part of the heart this curve here is following this handle and then this part of the heart is following this handle and right now those handles are tied together so if I click on this handle as you can see I get this different tool here when I hover over the handle right there I click on it and I drag and, and the two handles are tied together well we don't necessarily want that so I'll just kind of put that back where I had it what we want to do is break those two apart and if you'll hold down, once you hover over, if you'll hold down the Option key, Alt Option key, uh, you'll get this um, opened uh, triangle here. And that lets us break the handles. And then we can reshape our heart. Okay, so we have a handle here on this vertex. We have the two handles here that we can create so what we need to do is get a little curve down here. This is fine. This would work. Um, but if we want a little more roundness to this, what we need to do is have uh, be able to have this vertex also be uh, Bezier. And what we do there is hold down the Alt, Alt key again, click on it, and then start dragging some handles out. All right, we've got those handles. So now we've rounded this vertex down here also. And then again, to break these handles, your Alt Option key, and you can begin to shape this a little bit differently. Maybe take on a little bit more of a heart shape. Adjust all of these however you want to. And once you've broken that uh, handle, those handles there, uh, then all you have to do is just click on them. And you can kind of adjust this to get the heart that you want. And let's see. From there, we can adjust just like every other shape. We can adjust the color. So, of course, our heart, we want it to be red. And uh, that works nicely. But maybe we want to change the stroke color to, to white. Make this a pretty heart. And again, down here you have your contents, shape one, and all of your uh, properties that you can animate on this. All right, so there you have um, our heart and using Bezier curves, Bezier lines, and adjusting them. And then also the uh, lightning bolt there with just using straight lines. Now let's look at uh, the Eiffel Tower and another aspect or another way of drawing certain shapes. What I did is, of course, I don't really know. I mean, I know what the Eiffel Tower looks like, but I don't really know how to draw it. So what I did is went to the Internet, found me a decent picture of the Eiffel Tower, imported it in, and uh, dropped it into the composition. And you can see that there's my Eiffel Tower JPEG there. Dropped it into the composition. I'm going to use this uh, to draw my Eiffel Tower shape. Now... I'm going to show you a few um, ways of navigating in the viewer. Now, this is just the viewer. And uh, to uh, 
move around, zoom in on this so we can get closer and get our, our points drawn with a little more accuracy. Um, first off, your space bar. When you hold down your space bar, hold it down, you'll get this hand. With that hand, you can move your viewer around. This is like picking up your canvas and moving your canvas around. All right. Then you can zoom into the picture or into the viewer. It's like getting closer to your canvas. I'm using, uh, I'm on a PC this time around, and I'm using Control plus and minus. Uh, that would be Command plus and minus, I believe, on the Mac. And so I can zoom in closer, and I'm going to want to zoom in closer to set my points. And then when I need to move, I'm going to hold down the space bar, and I can move this around so I can see this more closely. All right, so let's begin to draw. We're going to use both techniques in this one. We're going to just click some points, and then we're going to click and drag at other points. So you get an idea of how we can create this. So I'm going to get my pen tool, and for this one, uh, I need to make sure that I'm not on my Eiffel Tower there. Nothing is selected in my timeline, and I want to turn off my fill for this one, and uh, we, we can add the fill in later, but for right now, I don't want that fill, and I'll turn this down just a little bit, maybe to about 10 pixels. And I'm going to have to guess this bottom one here. But I'm going to start right down here trying to get the bottom of this leg, this inside here, this inside point here. I'm going to come in about right here, click, start my first point. And then, of course, this curves. So what I want to do is I want to come up here to the top, this middle point here. And I'm going to click and then start dragging to the right. And you can see that I get that curve and kind of get that curve where I want it. And if you'll notice that my two handles are horizontal um, to the picture, and I'm trying to keep that as straight as I can because that's going to help me draw that curve the way I want it, and then for this other curve to come down the way I want it. So I'm going to come down here and kind of guess at that again, and there's my other curve that works. I'm going to push down the space bar so I can move this over a little bit, see this where I want it. And then I'm going to try to track this outside of the leg and guess in here. And there's that point. And then just going to start clicking at this to kind of outline the tower. And I know there's a slight curve here, but I'm not going to worry about that. In fact, if I want to later, I can come back and adjust that. So I'm just going to click here. And there's really not a lot of curve there, but we'll, we'll let that go for right now. And then just kind of start outlining again. And definitely there's a curve on this one. So what I'm going to do is come in about here. And I'm going to click and just get a straight line. We can come back and adjust this in a minute. Get a straight line and then move on up. And... I'm not going for a lot of accuracy because, again, this is just going to be kind of uh, for uh, a little bit of a cartoon look. So I'm not too concerned about it being dead on. Um, so I'm just going to kind of keep clicking. And then now on the way down, I'm going to try to match up my points on, from the other side. So this is somewhat symmetrical. So where I've clicked my other points, coming back down, I want to click uh, an exact opposite of it on the other side. Keep doing this. Again, all I'm doing to move the picture is holding down the space bar and moving the picture and then letting go of the space bar and then I get my tool back, my pen tool back and continue drawing. And then I'm going to Come down here and try to trace this, guessing at it, and then did a pretty decent job there. And now to close this out, I have to come back and click on my starting point. And now we have our full, and then I'm going to command minus to see, to zoom out and see my full picture and kind of adjust that. Uh, I've drawn that shape layer. I'm going to turn off the visibility to my Eiffel Tower 
and now you see I have an outline of the Eiffel Tower. Looks pretty decent. This would work uh, again for motion graphics, uh, just designing a certain look um, that would work. Now there's one thing that would add to this and this little space right in here. And let's click that back on the Eiffel Tower back on this little area right here. Um, is fairly iconic to the Eiffel Tower and so we can add that in so let's make sure that we are on that we select our shape layer uh, that we're drawing with the Eiffel Tower and then I'm gonna command plus so I can zoom back in get my hand tool and start clicking in actually and that's not where I want to click so command Z do this outer one right here kind of get this real quick I'm just gonna go with the rail there and now we have that space and when we command minus to zoom back out I'm gonna get my selection tool so I'm no longer drawing shapes and we can look at uh, turn off the visibility for the picture and there we have our Eiffel Tower so there's our Eiffel Tower. I'm going to take this a little bit further because right now we don't have a fill. Um, I don't know. It would be your preference as to whether you wanted a fill or not, whatever type of look you're going for. Of course, I'm not going to try to um, add in all of the grading here. I, that's just going to be too intricate, too, more, too much work to do there to try to add in that, the, that look there. Um, we have the basic outline. Um, and that most people are going to see that and know what, what you're looking at. But let's say we want to add a fill into this. Uh, I'm going to open up Shape Layer 3 and look at my contents. I have two shapes. I have the center window here, and then I also have the outer shape, the outline of the entire tower. Of course, when we add a fill, we want this area right here to remain open. So there is a trick to doing this. And to do this, we go to contents here and we're going to go to add, click on this add button here. And then we're going to merge paths. Okay. When we did that, it added this right here, merge paths one. It has merged these two paths. We still have access to them, but this gives us some options over both of the paths that we can work with. So the first thing we want to do is scroll open uh, the Merge Paths 1, and there's a mode. The mode that we want to go to is Exclude Intersections. And so now that gives us back our two paths here. And now we have, um, when we select this, when we go up to fill here, it's going to fill in. It's going to fill in every every part of the Eiffel Tower except for this window here. And so that works the way we want it. And of course, we can come in here, and I'm going to reverse this. Uh, I'm going to fill it with white, and it, we can go with that. Leave it like that. That looks good. Or we can click on it. Um, actually, need to click on my merge paths there, and um, actually turn the stroke off. Let's see how that looks. Okay, just thins it out a little bit. But there you have the Eiffel Tower. So using the pen tool, we can draw straight lines, and we can also draw curved lines and we can create any type of shape that we want to create. A good thing about creating this shape in here, creating all of these shapes in here, is we can go to our uh, contents, go to the transform properties for that shape, and because we've created them in After Effects, they're vectors and they're going to scale up nicely and work for us if we need to scale them up. Um, whereas if we had gone to the internet, just grabbed a JPEG image of a Thunderbolt, brought it in. If we scaled that up, it would become jagged. So by creating them here in After Effects, we gain a lot of control over uh, the objects and we can continue to edit them. We can 
animate them in any number of ways. Um, so this is a very powerful tool, the pen tool in After Effects.